Okay guys, I'm gonna show you how to fix a noisy heater on an RV. The first thing we need to do is turn off the gas and the power to it. The gas is turned off. Now we're gonna remove the inside access panel. Just remove these two screws. And that, that panel will come off and then we have access to it. Okay, there is our furnace. Now the next step is to disconnect this ducts over here. Okay guys, I had removed the two dots on this side, but there is two more on the other side. And the only way to get to those is by pulling out these drawers. This drawer next to the stove. So now we can access them. Here they are. This will take a 5 16 not driver. This is like seven in one. Very handy tool for uh, RV. So I'll get you one. Okay. Everything is disconnected from the inside. You can see the front is completely clear. Now we're gonna go outside. Okay, here's the troublemaker. Uh, I already removed the screws so I can show you guys. Uh, now we're gonna come out and pull everything apart. Pull this piece out first. Then take this. Don't lose any of those parts because you're gonna need them. This panel you always cut out with a knife around it so you won't mess up the paint on it or the decals. I've already done that. And there she came. Now that is nasty. Look at that. But that is not the that is a problem, but that's not the the problem for the noise. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and pull these screws on the bottom, two screws. We're gonna cut the gas off right there, disconnect this line completely. And then we're gonna turn off the power. Way back there, there is a switch, the on and off switch that will cut the power off. So let's do that. Now this is very important. Make sure to use a backup wrench, don't just get one wrench on one side and turn it because then you're going to break the, the gas line. So make sure to use uh, uh, two wrenches. Okay everybody, the gas line is disconnected, the power is disconnected, the screws are removed from the bottom and now all we have to do is pull it out. Uh, for this particular one you don't have to remove the uh, fascia all around it, you don't have to remove that. But this is uh, uh, small enough so it'll come out without removing the whole thing. So just gonna remove the inside part of it. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and pull it out. And then I'll get back with you in a few minutes. Okay, the furnace is out. Um, I decided to leave it hanging like that. So this will be my, uh, like my working bench. Uh, we go ahead and clean all this out. We're just gonna blow it out. But I want to show you the problem on these here. These mud daubers. Mud daubers have been getting into it. See back there? All the way back there. Those are the mud daubers. So that's the reason for the noise. So we'll go ahead and uh, remove uh, these screws on this housing over here. They're all accessible with a long screwdriver bit. So I'll go ahead and pull that out and show you once it's all out, okay?
Okay, uh, I pull all the screws out. Okay, I got the housing out of the way. It's not completely out because I don't want to disconnect all these wires and stuff, but uh, you can see the mud divers all the way inside. So all we're gonna do is knock those out with a screwdriver or just break them, break them off and then just blow them out of there. And then this uh, furnace will work just like a new one. See, there's they're out and this is what I got out of there. My divers, these are real bad. So uh, if you have uh, like an LP appliance, just uh, like refrigerators and furnaces and the water heater in your, uh, your RV, make sure to put the mud diver screens that will prevent all these uh, issues. I mean, they, they, they could cause a lot of damage. So I'll go ahead and put this back together and I'll show you how it works. Okay, the furnace is back together. All I have to do is put this, this cover pieces on, but always make sure to turn on the that switch back there uh, I don't know if you can see it good but it's it's an on and off switch for the 12 volt power so uh, make sure to turn that on and always do your gas leak test I spray it with some gas leak detector which is recommended uh, a lot of people use the soapy water. Uh, we RV technicians are not supposed to use that. We always use the gas leak detector. And this is good stuff. Now, looks like we don't have a leak. Everything is good. Uh, if it was a leak, that would be bubbling. Right there where the threads are, it would be bubbling right there but it's not. So we're good. We'll go ahead and give it a try. Okay, here we go. The job is now completed. This baby is running very smooth, very quiet, just like he's supposed to. Thank you for watching.